Good morning and welcome to CNN Plus. I'm Kate Baldwin. It is March 29th, 2022, a historic day for CNN as you are watching the first live broadcast on our brand new streaming service. We hope you'll join us here every day for unique and groundbreaking news programs and award-winning series. Now, let's get to it. Here are the five things you need to know to start your day. Number one, get out now. Mariupol's mayor calling for the, quote, complete evacuation of his city because of this. Look at this new drone video revealing total destruction of the key southern port city. It's estimated right now 160,000 people are still trapped there. Russian and Ukrainian negotiators, they're back at it today, meeting in Istanbul for yet another round of peace talks. A big sticking point for Russia, Ukraine recognizing the annexation of Crimea and the independence of the Donbass region. What that really means is Ukraine having to finally give up on and hand over two significant pieces of its own territory. As for the Ukrainian side, President Zelensky says the obvious goals of the talks are, in his words, peace and the restoration of normal life as soon as possible. Still looming over all of this, Russia's nuclear threat, which they are very clearly not backing away from. Here's the Kremlin's top spokesperson from just overnight. We have a security concept that very clearly states that only uh, when, when there is a threat for existence of... Stand by in the control room. Camera three online. Make your move three. We're up. And up first, Christian Amanpour in Ukraine. Stand by router 11, track 11. Go, Christian. I'm Christian Amanpour reporting live for CNN Plus from Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital, where sandbags are going up, air raid sirens were wailing this morning, while peace talks are already underway in Istanbul, Turkey. I'm David Culver in Shanghai, China, as this massive metropolis is locking down. Just ahead, I'm going to walk you through some of the incredible sights and extreme measures as China works to contain this latest outbreak, the worst since Wuhan two years ago, and tens of millions are, like me, confined to their homes. Here we are on day 34 of the Ukraine war. Who would have thought that this time, more than a month ago, Vladimir Putin would have sent his forces in several directions to make a multi-pronged assault on this country? He thought that he would take this country within days. In fact, there were preparations in Moscow for that very fact. It has not happened. Welcome to the first edition of Who's Talking? And at the outset, I want to give you a sense of what you'll find here. We're going to sit down with interesting people across the spectrum, from politics to business, entertainment to sports and culture, and have thoughtful discussions. Instead of scrambling for headlines, we're going to see where the talk takes us. Of course, if one of our guests wants to make news, that's okay, too. But the hope is, the point is, to have conversations, not interviews, that are more intimate, more real than what you usually see on television. We're in search of light, not heat. So let's get started. My very first guest on Who's Talking is one of the most revered military men of the 21st century. He's led bold special ops missions which have changed the course of history. And he's written books on leadership ranging from the hero code to the value of making your bed each morning. Who better to explain where we are now in the standoff with Russia? Who better to explain what it will take to meet the challenges we face? Admiral Bill McRaven, welcome. I am honored and delighted to have you here for the first time. Uh, thanks, Chris. It was great to be with you. And it's awfully good of you to do it. Absolutely. So, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? The first show, this is a big deal. <laughs> well, it, is, it is for me. I don't know about for you. Speaking of big deals, as I mentioned at the top, you have directed some of the most daring special... Pulling back, 
Russia claims it's scaling back military operations in Ukraine, but new attacks lead to a new round of skepticism about President Putin's intentions. Booster shot. The FDA authorizes a second COVID booster dose for adults over 50. Water wars. A flood of concerns from a community running dry as investors buy water rights to control the flow. From CNN's Washington Bureau, this is the newscast with Wolf Blitzer. We begin with the new hope for diplomacy between Russia and Ukraine after signs of progress emerged from peace talks. Russia now saying it will reduce military activity around two major cities and indicating a meeting between the presidents of Russia and Ukraine is possible. But U.S. officials warned uh, against trusting any statements from Russia about its violent invasion that forced more than 3.9 million Ukrainian refugees to flee the country. We have seen a spread plight get on the ground in Ukraine for us. Caitlin Collins is over at the White House. Alex Marquardt is in Washington. Alex, let's start with you. Uh, it does appear things may be shifting on both the diplomatic and military fronts. Yeah, that's right, Wolf. We are starting to see a bit of a change in Russia's attitude and in their messaging. They say that they're going to gradually de-escalate the military efforts that have been directed at the capital, Kyiv, and Chernigiv. That's also in the northern part of Ukraine. But Russia is cautioning that does not mean a ceasefire. It is a reflection, according to U.S. and British officials, of Russia's military failures in the northern part of Ukraine. And the Pentagon is warning that the threat to the capital, to Kyiv, is not over. Tonight, new signs that Russia's war in Ukraine may be entering a different phase. The Russian Ministry of Defense announced on Tuesday that it intends to drastically reduce hostilities on two fronts. Around the capital, Kyiv, and the northern city of Chernigiv, which has been battered by the Russian assault. Finally, in our retrocast, we look back to 1980, an important moment in news history, the launch of CNN. Words from the founder of the network on more than 40 years ago still ring true today as CNN Plus makes its debut. Ted Turner spoke at the headquarters in Atlanta on June 1st, 1980. For the American people whose thirst for understanding and a better life has made this venture possible. For the cable industry whose pioneering spirit caused this great step forward in communications. And for those employees of Turner Broadcasting whose total commitment to their company has brought us together today, I dedicate the news channel for America, the cable news network. As he said, CNN was, quote, a great step forward in communications. And now, as we embrace a new digital era in journalism, CNN Plus will serve as a powerful platform in the world of news and streaming. And we're proud to say, by the way, that Ted Turner is our platform's first subscriber. I'm Wolf Blitzer. We're streaming here live again tomorrow night and every weeknight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and always available on demand. Thanks very much for watching the newscast on CNN Plus, where the news comes first.